Hello, bonjour, Alberta. Did you know that at least 238,000 people speak Francais in Alberta? And those numbers just keep on growing? Oui, oui, c'est vrai, it's true. And thanks to Shaw TV Community Access Programming, we get to reach out to everyone to let you know all about special people, places, events, and activities happening right here in this great province in both English and en français. That's right, mes amis. We begin the first part of our program in English, and then we repeat it en français. So stay with us. Restez à l'écoute. Bienvenue and welcome to Hello Bonjour Alberta. I'm Marc Lalonde. And I'm Anne Boiteau. And in our 12th season, we continue to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the twinning of the cities of Ca Quebec City and Calgary. And also celebrating the linguistic duality that we enjoy in Alberta and in Canada. Did you know that French was the first European language spoken in Alberta for quite some time? And speaking of Canada, we have two very interesting guests with us today from the Canadian Club of Calgary. We have Richard Hare, the president, <coughs> and Trevor Lynn, co-chair of the Publicity Committee. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So to get started, we normally like to find out who you are. So let's start with you, Richard. Can you tell us a bit about where you were originally born, if it wasn't here? some interesting things that have happened through your life and uh, how you ended up in Calgary and at the Canadian Club. Well, I was born at a very early age <laughs> in, <laughs> in Medicine Hat, Alberta <coughs> ah. and uh, mm. came to Calgary for university and then um, drifted through uh, a number of smaller places in, in Alberta, Tabor, uh, Nobleford, uh, Strathmore NSR. I, I taught there before returning to Calgary in 1977 and and since that time I have uh, of course been in the city and uh, um, it's been a, a good ride. So have you said you were teaching? Yes, uh, I was in education for 41 years but uh, much of that time I was an Alberta Teachers Association uh, politician slash bureaucrat ah. and so uh, probably at the end of the day spent about 20 years in the classroom and the rest of the time uh, with uh, professional responsibilities within the Alberta Teachers Association. But, uh, you know, there's uh, in, in just, just a comment that the, the real work in education is, of course, done in the classroom. Yes, of course. And uh, there's no doubt my respect uh, for the, the teacher and the, particularly the, the grade one teacher starting there with uh, 25, 30 kids and having to teach them everything from soup to nuts. Now that's a job, that's a responsibility, and I'm just tremendously impressed by all my former colleagues in the, uh, in the education business. And I hear you've got three grandchildren that uh, you're also teaching. Well, I, I do what I can, and you know, there's a beautiful thing that education is reciprocal, eh? Yes. Uh, I, I learned from them. <laughs> too, and it's a, it keeps you young, or it tries to keep you young as far as that goes, but uh, uh, certainly, uh, um, you know, Marshall, Jackson, and, and Parker uh, are the, the lights of both my life and my wife's, and uh, we're there all the time, and as a matter of fact, after I leave uh, here this evening, hopefully I'll get into part of, uh, of Marshall's hockey game. Oh, nice. Following on nice. that, um, I'm sure our viewers will recognize uh, some uh, famous names in your family. Um, well, you're not uh, the only famous person. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I'm at the bottom end of the totem pole, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. Uh, and uh, I, I like to describe myself uh, as the patriarch uh, of the Hare family. <laughs> and, uh, and with that self-imposed title and uh, the dollar seventy-five, I can get a cup of coffee <laughs> at, at most Tim Hortons in the city. You know, it's just reality. But, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure many of your, your viewers will note that my son is Kent Hare, uh, MP for Calgary Centre and Minister of Veteran Affairs. My wife Judy Hare is a, a trustee on the Calgary Board of Education. And uh, my daughter Christy uh, is a lawyer. All my children are lawyers, incidentally. And uh, 
she works for TransCanada Pipe and also, of course, uh, spending a great deal of time raising three, three grand boys, uh, the, you know, three boys of hers, uh, and have them involved in everything from uh, piano playing to hockey playing to uh, baseball and anything else uh, we can get our, our hands into. Fantastic. We'll have to put the lawyer jokes back on the shelf. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's a start. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, How about you, Trevor? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about you. Sure. I was born here, born and raised in Calgary, and I was a lucky beneficiary of parents who, back in the, the time, lined up to get me into immersion school. Uh, back in those days, you literally did have to line up to get your kid a spot in an immersion program mm -hmm. in this city. I don't know if it's still the case. Um, so More I, schools now. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I learned French in Calgary, which certainly when I lived in Ottawa, people used to find quite remarkable. <laughs> um, you learned where? Calgary? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm very proud of that fact. I think it really speaks to the richness of our linguistic duality. Um, that kids from Calgary or people in Montreal might be learning English. It's, mm -hmm. it's a cross-country program. So I, I went to U of C, which was literally right across the street from my high school. Then I ventured out to U of S to do my master's degree. But I spent 13 years in Ottawa, um, much like uh, Richard Sun Kent, working in politics. I worked for Dan Hayes, who was the Speaker of the Senate at the time, and some larger national organizations like the Association of Universities and Colleges of Canada, uh, lobbying in the post-secondary education sector. Um, before finally, after th I'd never intended to stay in Ottawa for 13 years, but I did. And then I returned to Calgary, and I'm enjoying being back home and seeing my family on a regular basis, too. So did you study in politics? Yes, I did. I, I studied in political science and specifically Canadian politics. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. And your master's was also in Canadian politics? Absolutely, yeah. And then oh, when I had the chance to get a job with Dan Hayes, who in those days was the only um, liberal game in town, um, I, I jumped at it. And it took me to Ottawa, and that was something that I'd always wanted to do was work on Parliament Hill. Uh, um, and so I did, still remember Did you it. follow him into the Senate? Oh, he was already in the oh, Senate. Oh, he, he was a senator Senate. for quite a while. He's very well known okay. for all that. Yeah. But I think we have to move you along yes. where yeah. we need to talk about the Canadian Club. Yeah. Can you give us, yeah. uh, uh, Richard, a, a, a well, short? Well, quite, quite simply, the Canadian Club was, uh, was formed in 1905 in, in Hamilton, Ontario, in 1907. It came to it came to Calgary and has has flourished with certain ebbs and flows over the years. Uh, R. B. Bennett, you know, uh, was a president of the Canadian Club prior to his becoming the uh, uh, Prime Minister of Canada. So uh, we we've continued with that kind of a legacy. Our our focus is quite simply in uh, in trying to encourage a greater sense of Canadianism amongst all our populations and to encourage that we bring in people who are are somewhat well known or to speak about topics that uh, are interesting often controversial uh, we bring in numerous political people uh, the uh, the Canadian Club is is very political but very Nonpartisan. Uh, yes. Okay, this is uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is the thing I, I can say. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've had uh, Mr. Prentice, who unfortunately passed away just in a tragic accident a couple of weeks ago. But we've had uh, Justin Trudeau there. Um, my son Kent spoke. Uh, so um, very obviously, uh, those types of issues are things that we think uh, people are interested in. And generally speaking, our best attendances are when those types of people are there. Happen. But there are also topics that, uh, that, that bring forth uh, a number of people too. Uh, uh, just our last, uh, our last speaker was Brian Keating, you know, okay. uh, from the Calgary Zoo. Sure. And it was just, a, uh, for me, an inspiring sort of talk. I just sort of uh, uh, greatly enjoyed it. We, we are going to have in the upcoming year uh, a discussion on uh, uh, assisted dying which of course has just been brought right in now. and yeah, it's uh, mm -hmm. you have some people of course claim they've gone far too far 
and others, of course, who claim not, not far, far enough. enough. Yeah. So you know, which which is always uh, very often the way it is in, in any political discussion. Yeah. But uh, but we we try to uh, we we try to feel what is in the best interests of the, of our of our club and and the Calgary population in general. And, and, and we're very fortunate in Calgary because we, we do have a large number of people who are experts on mm, all kinds yes. of things and we can bring them in to, uh, to speak to a, a large group of people who are interested in that topic. So tell us a bit about, about the, 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 <coughs> the venue itself. Yes. Uh, where do you meet? When do you meet? We, we How meet do approximately, get uh, approximately once a month and we could do more, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But. Mm. Uh, at this point in time, we're, we're, we're sort of set in this uh, uh, basically once a month thing. Uh, we generally meet at the Ranchman's Club. Occasionally we will go other places when we have, uh, when we brought in Justin Trudeau a year and Larger a half groups. ago, yeah. we, we moved to the Ranchman's. And, and we were assisted in that, uh, in that total venture with other groups too. So, so, so we, you know, we, we try to judge as to just how many people we might get there, but the Ranchman's been uh, our, our venue for quite some time and they treat us very very well and uh, I think we'll be there for some you know some further period of time you know so the, it, it, it's a luncheon you invite yes. people yeah. to lunch yeah, we, with we, a speaker. Uh, we, we try to have uh, our speaker commence at approximately noon we have people showing up around 11 30 and so on um, we will start the speech uh, very very much around the 12 o'clock setting um, speech might end around one. We'll give about 15 minutes for, for questions, and we certainly try to have everybody out of there by 1:30 because, uh, uh, of course, many of our people are still working. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, they're all very active. There are places to go, things to do, sure. and uh, that, that's. We live in a very fast world, and uh, the people will take time uh, to hear and talk and discuss. But uh, life goes on too. And how many clubs are there across Canada? Do you know? You know, I am not sure. That's an excellent mm -hmm. question. Uh, but I, I would assume in, in the certainly largest all the major cities, cities yeah, because yeah. like I say, the first was in, in 1905. Uh, I, I know I have met with the, uh, the president of the Vancouver Club. And, you know, we certainly, there, there's, but that, that's one I will try to find out because now I'm, Curious. I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm curious, and, and I'm not going to try to make you spill the beans too yeah. much here. But do you have any other initiatives, sort of under wraps, that you're you're considering to to further your mission, other than than the the very interesting luncheon? You know, we we've been around since 1905. Uh, the uh, <coughs> it's worked pretty well. You know, very very successful. Yes. Uh, however, you know what I mean. As as a new incoming president, you always like to. Uh, maybe change things up a little bit or try something so and they may have done this in the past anyway but uh, I, I, I'm thinking maybe a little bit that maybe we can try a debate you know what I mean oh, yeah. uh, we've got all kinds of, you know we just talked about the assisted dying yes. thing I'm sure we will have we could easily find somebody to say they've gone too far the other side, yes. not far enough. You know what I mean there. And, 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 you might and so, have to extend it on a few hours too. Well, and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and that's a good point there, there too. So, um, you know, we talk about changing our time. We have had uh, some evening functions too and so on, but, but by and large over the years, um, the luncheon uh, sort of format has worked and uh, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I guess is part of the mantra here. Exactly. I think the important thing to remember is regardless of which format we end up using, the whole concept of bringing to a public space and all of our meetings are open to the public, a uh, place where you can hear high quality public discourse <coughs> in Calgary is very important. Um, there are political issues, economic issues, and other speeches as well on conservation. Um, it, it's a natural venue for those kind of discussions. Well, I'm sorry we're out of time, uh, thank you so much, well, Richard no, it's Hare. Been, it's been my pleasure. And thank Trevor Lynn, thank you for joining us and and uh, and and letting us know all about the club. Um, so, uh, to our viewers, please stay with us. On continue en français.